coming up? Oh, God, it's the mannequin, of course. I broke that into three parts. I'm a very 70s boy in that respect. <laughs> it's all right, I'll, I'll remember this. Surprise, surprise. How do you say that? With Sam and Mark. Oh, now that's cool. Do not be scared. It is a rare medical script. Is it pathophysiology by any chance? My voice was a couple of octaves lower. Who booked him? And now, enjoy the podcast. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How How do do you you say say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's episode of How Do You Say That? As always, sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk. Now, every week we set out to prove that there is more than just one way to read a script. And if you're a voiceover artist, director, actor, podcaster, maybe anyone who uses a mic professionally, then this is the podcast for you. Let me introduce my co-host, Sam Boffin. Hello, Hello. Sam. Hello. Hiya. Hi, Now, today's fun fact about Sam. I'm very well, thank you. Fun fact about (laughs) Sam is that she has a life-sized mannequin at the top of the stairs in her house that regularly scares people. I would be terrified. Yes, it regularly scares me, actually. If I I go to the loo in the middle of the night. I think, oh, God, what the is that? Oh, God, it's the mannequin, of course. But I keep my jewellery on it. <laughs> That's even weirder. Sounds weird, doesn't it? I once stayed in someone's house and he had a full size Dalek at the top of his desk. And oh, that now scared that's the bejesus cool. out of me. And, uh, yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, my co host is Mark Rice, who doesn't like mayo. No. And he doesn't like ketchup. No. But he yeah. does like Mary Rose sauce. Yeah. Mm, yes. Now, this is it's weird because Mary Rose sauce is basically mayo and ketchup together. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I don't know why it just changes the flavor. Isn't that that's a weird fun fact? That is weird. That is weird. <laughs> do you have a lot of prawn cocktails in your life? I do like a prawn cocktail. I'm very <laughs> I'm a very 70s boy in that respect. <laughs> well, there you go. well, of course, we also have a very special guest who this week is John Mundy. Hello, John. Hello. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thanks we for joining are us. Fine. <laughs> Absolutely. John was born and educated in Manchester and is possibly best known to listeners of LBC as their station imaging voice for the last 10 years. So he trained as an actor, but he's worked mostly in TV continuity. First, he worked for ITV and then The Beeb, where he anchored regional news programme Northwest Tonight. He did indeed, absolutely. (laughs) Well, after a five-year stint working in real estate in Florida, John returned to the UK in 2000, where he's been a full-time voiceover ever since, uh, working in TV and radio commercials, corporate documentaries, and most genres in between, as far as I can see, John. Yeah. (laughs) In this very busy time, have you got a fun fact that you can share with us? Well, um, as you were just saying then, that I, I started off as an actor... Uh, in a repertory theatre, which I was. I was at the famous uh, Oldham Rep. It produced some big names, though, Oldham Rep, didn't it? It certainly did. And, and the time that I was there specifically, um, yes, a lot. Anne Kirkbride, who was dear wow, Dream Coronation. Dear Dream Corrie, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, in, in Rep, this was fortnightly Rep, so we would do a different play every two weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So you'd be rehearsing during the day for the play that you were going to do the following two weeks. And and then at Christmas, the panto, that always made enough money, really, to keep the theatre going for the rest yes. of the year. And the, the dame that particular year had a pet dog. And I was the pet, I was the pet dog in a, in a full outfit, a full sort of um, faux, faux fur costume, wow. a black and white costume with, a, with a, a black and white eye and a black nose. Wow. And um, uh, so I was, I was in the green room waiting for a queue to, to go on when the boss came in and sat in the green room with us with his pet dog, which was a little beadle, beagle. And, and just as I heard my cue coming up, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play a trick on the dog. So I put the hood of this costume up, got on all fours on the floor and growled at this dog while it flew from the sofa, the other side of the green room, and yes. fixed itself on my face. Oh, no. So, so, so I had to limp on on three paws with a bit of toilet roll in, in the other paw. Oh, um, my God. The boss took me to the casualty department, still in the costume, and have, <laughs> always having an eye for publicity, he managed to get hold of a press uh, organisation, uh, sent a photographer down, took a picture of me, and the headline the next day was Dog Bites Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and on that very savage note, let's have a look at the first script of our show and ask, how do you say that? How do you say that? Okay, so this is something I never bring scripts like this along. I this never is a horrible do. script. It that is a horrible Sam. script, and I do <laughs> apologise. It is a rare medical script for me, John. I'm so sorry. I can only apologise in advance. It's, it's all right. I'll I'll remember this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the problem. You're on my list. So, who's the audience for this, Sam? Is it doctors or is it patients? Who is it? 
No, it's not doctors. It's more patients or very, very junior doctors or students of. But it, it's quite light in terms of the medical part of it. <laughs> I mean, light is not a word I would have well... used in this script at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's 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 lighter than some I've seen, I have to say. So presumably it goes with video pictures or cartoon pictures of pul- pulmonary arterial well, hypertension? Now, this might help you because it really helped me. I was in this a cartoon doctor. Ah. Oh. Now, that okay. helped me enormously. Yes. Because it meant that I could have a little bit more fun with it and, and I could think myself into that a character, if you like. I'm tempted to go mad professor with it now, but that's going too far, isn't it? Well, it uh, probably, but the, the point is, is that that's sort of how I approached it. Okay. No, that it wasn't does quite help. mad, Professor. No, 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 it was, I appreciate it was, that. It, it really helped me get into it. There is a very horrible phrase in this script, uh, and it comes okay. there twice, blood flow through. Yeah. Oh, really? And See, it's I didn't a mind tongue, It's bit. a tongue twister, so I'm going to have to be really careful. It is, but actually, if you get the sense of it, it isn't. you don't have to run the three things together, do you? Okay. It's reducing blood flow through the lungs. Ah. So it's not like that. It's not, it's do, you, not a... do you mark scripts up where you're going to put a little pause like that? I, I don't. don't. No. Oh, there you go. Neither of us do. <laughs> I, I'd already put a sort of comma after blood flow. Okay. Interesting. Just to tell me that mm. there is a bit of a, you know, to, to make sure you get the, the words right, it's better if you've got a little bit of a break after blood flow. Yeah. flow <laughs> That's said. exactly what I'm talking yeah. about, John. <laughs> what I have done, though, is there's one word in there that I don't like at all, and I have put a hyphen in it. I've put three, two two in that, actually. Have that you? Yeah. Ooh, you'll probably well, do better three, than me, it's, then. It, it, it's three <laughs> syllables, isn't it? Yes, is it, it is. Is it pathophysiology, yeah. by any chance? Yes, it is. Yes, you see, you see, those are the kind yeah. of words in medical scripts that jump off the page at yeah. you, aren't they? I know. And do you I ever know. change uh, the middle part of that, uh, path of phys- I've, I've changed that to F-I-double-Z-Y oh, to give... Yeah, I do do that occasionally. I, d- I, yeah. I haven't done that, but I, this is the sort of thing I could and would do yeah. if it was, yeah, yeah absolutely. Only, to, only to, to give you a clue as you coming up to it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well, mm. I'll have a go first, and then we'll talk about that, and then John can have a go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's, yeah. let's see. But a character read is interesting mm. as opposed to a straightforward kind of mm. corporate medical script. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is a rare progressive disease that causes the pulmonary arteries to thicken and narrow, reducing blood flow through the lungs and leading to strain on the heart. Current understanding of the complex pathophysiology of PAH has grown exponentially, revealing various mechanisms for treating this progressive disease. PAH affects the pulmonary arteries and the heart by reducing blood flow through the lungs, in turn increasing strain to the heart to eventually cause right ventricular dysfunction. Yes, now you went, you lent into character there. I lent into cartoon character because it was easier. It was easier, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, much It's easier. so much easier if you can do that. But it would have been too much. But I probably would have offered that as a first read and then they could have taken would that. You? At least they could take that down. With no care that they would be going, what the? Who put him? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. It depends how much of a, how much of a discussion we'd had about cartoon <laughs> beforehand. Yeah. It, it's not the sort of script that lends itself to a character, really, is it? Because no. it's very serious. No, and it was it was so it was very much a gentle sort of um, yeah, it was very much a gentle character through. So it it helped me a bit. John, would you like to have a crack at it? Yes, but I have no idea what kind of. Character. Mm. Oh, you don't need to. I didn't really do a character. It just that it just so it just gently helped me slightly to think yeah. of it as something other than just fair yes. tricky words on a page. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go then. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is a rare progressive disease that causes the pulmonary arteries to thicken and narrow, reducing blood flow through the lungs and leading to strain on the heart. Current understanding of the complex pathophysiology of PAH has grown exponentially, revealing various mechanisms for treating this progressive disease. PAH affects the pulmonary arteries and the heart by reducing blood flow through the lungs, in turn increasing strain to the heart, eventually to cause right ventricular dysfunction. Very nice. That, was, that, that felt very trustworthy. 
It That's, really did. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But then I'm used to hearing John's voice a lot on the radio. So I, I, uh, I got the immediate trust from that, John. I do tend, for, for some reason, because I'm not very trustworthy at all. For some, <laughs> reason, for some reason, I do get I do get a lot of that kind of thing, you know, bedside manner and all that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What slightly worried me is that both of you have pronounced pulmonary as pulmonary, and yes. I pronounced it as pulmonary. Ah. Oh. And I wonder if now I've done it absolutely wrong. <laughs> that's just funny. So that's just amusing now. Uh, shall we hear how Sam did it, John? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It, well, it's it's always it. a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> pulmonary arterial hypertension is a rare progressive disease that causes the pulmonary arteries to thicken and narrow, reducing blood flow through the lungs and leading to strain on the heart. Current understanding of the complex pathophysiology of PAH has grown exponentially, revealing various mechanisms for treating this progressive disease. PAH affects the pulmonary arteries and the heart by reducing blood flow through the lungs, in turn increasing strain to the heart to eventually cause right ventricular dysfunction. It's a difficult script, that, and I, and I think we've all, we've all had a, a tiny bit of difficulty with it. I'm very rarely asked to do medical scripts. And, that's the <laughs> and then you decided to bring it along. <laughs> yes. it's a bit of a masochist, really, aren't you? Oh, my God, no. But it's just, it's, it's, I find them such a, a difficulty. I, I must admit, I, d I don't find them easy. You know, it takes a lot of, of time going through it beforehand, for, you know, mm. for me. Um, I, I wouldn't dream of just skimming something like that. I, really, I'd have to really concentrate. And as I say, I would change words. I'd put slashes oh. here, there, dot, dot, dots. If you could see one of my scripts, yeah. uh, it's, it's just full of little marks. The trouble is I find that more confusing. Yeah, well, you know, yes. we, yeah. all, we all have our own little tricks, don't we, that we try. Yeah, yeah Anything totally. to get through it. And I think it that's is, possibly yeah. for me because I work live so so many years you know i was yeah. i was doing news for 20 22 years which has got a lot live. of complex stuff in it yeah yeah pe people's names and yeah when you hit words like pathophysiology yeah. you can feel the panic rising in you sometimes and that's john why you were saying you mark up yeah. scripts isn't it Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, even people like Angela Rippon, do you remember her? Oh, yes, Strictly yeah. Come Dancing as well. Yeah. Strictly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but before that career, she, before the dancing <laughs> she was career, a she, yeah. she was a newsreader. And I remember seeing in a documentary once that the, 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 the documentary makers had wired her with a, a heart monitor and a blood pressure cuff. Ooh. So as she was doing live news, um, there was a story about uh, uh, an African dictator. I think it was called something like Ndabaningi Sitoli. And, <laughs> and very obviously very difficult to, to pronounce, and she'd obviously practiced it beforehand. Yeah. Mm. But as she was reading through the autocue and this name was coming up, her blood pressure started to rise, her heart rate started to go up. Wow. As soon as she'd got it out and, and said the name... It dropped com completely back down to normal. Yeah. You, you know, if you've got a little technique that works for you by writing something out. So as I say, pathophysiology, I broke that into three parts, put hyphens in it, patho, hyphen, physi, hyphenology. And the middle bit, I've changed to F I double Z Y, yeah. just so that in my brain, I yep. know just glancing at it very quickly, it's pathophysiology. It's a yeah. great top tip. It, well, it works for me. How do you say that? Well, it's worthwhile remembering that these are real scripts that we've been working on, difficult though they are. Yeah. <laughs> but we've changed some names and details to avoid copyright issues. So, John, would you like to tell us about the script that you've brought with you today? Sure, yeah. Um, I've, I've done a, a series of documentaries recently, um, one of which is a series about the most haunted pubs in Britain. That's so cool. It's a great uh, script, this. <laughs> in comparison to what we've just read, this I is a know. beautiful script. <laughs> I know. It is. It's a gorgeous yeah. script, yeah. And so this this is already, uh, it's been released. I think it's on, it's certainly on YouTube at the moment. If you can find the link, I'll put it in the show notes. Oh, okay. Is it a dark documentary? Is it, is it, uh, so is it about the, the, the myth and legend of the, the things that you find? It is, but it's done in the kind of light-hearted way that a lot of these these programs are that go yep. into old houses and and people are, are measuring you know the temperature changes oh, and, yes. and, yep. and those little voice voice machines that if they can hear something they yep. 
you know, in the background, they say, "Oh, that that was what that what was that word he said?" So it's got that feel uh, to it. It's not yeah. serious at, at all. And this will seem like a really simple question, but when we come to Wales, yeah. is mm. it Wales is? Ah, now, I, funnily enough, I've put an apostrophe after the s. Yeah. <laughs> to tell me, I'm just going to do it as Wales. Yeah, Wales, that's what not I was Wales thinking. is. So one of Wales' most enigmatic is that. Yeah, okay, that's what I would have done. Yeah. Go on then, Sam. Let's give it a go. Okay. Nestled among the stunning Welsh landscapes, the Skirid Inn has a history steeped in mystery and phantoms. Known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters, and centuries-old secrets, this venue earned its reputation as one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. The exact age of the inn is unknown, but it was mentioned in documents from the year 1100. It has seen its fair share of turbulent times, serving as a hostel for weary travellers, a meeting place for rebels, and even where condemned prisoners were held en route to the gallows. It has also served as a courthouse. You did that thing that you do sometimes with documentary, Sam. You've ignored mm-hmm. the um, punctuation mm-hmm. and made it run into each other, but it made a lot more mm-hmm. sense that way. <laughs> yes, I, I quite like ignoring punctuation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I like the kind of approach. Um, that's a lot slower than I tend to do because I speak naturally ah, very quickly. Ah, okay. But knowing what the pictures were like, I, funnily enough, I saw one of the documentaries that I'd, I'd done um, and just recorded the script for the other day. Yeah. I saw it, and they'd slowed the whole thing down. Oh, <laughs> interesting. In the edit, they'd slowed the – it was still the same pitch, but yes. they'd slowed the pace of it. I mean, it's amazing what they can do with um, yeah. digital technology these days, mm. isn't it? But they'd actually slowed down my pace. So I must have recorded it too quickly for the pictures. How lovely to have a client that didn't make you do it all over again. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let me have a go at the Welsh landscapes then, shall I? Right, and yep. uh, see what I do with that, okay. Nestled among the stunning Welsh landscapes, the Skirid Inn has a history steeped in mystery and phantoms. Known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters and centuries-old secrets, this venue earned its reputation as one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. The exact age of the inn is unknown, but it was mentioned in documents from the year 1100. It's seen its fair share of turbulent times, serving as a hostel for weary travellers, a meeting place for rebels, and even where condemned prisoners were held en route to the gallows, as it also served as a courthouse. Ah, that was interesting. Why? Was it, it was interesting because I, I misread something and I hadn't realised I'd misread it. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. I hadn't realised I'd misread it. Yeah, you did do the end differently than Mark just did. Yeah. But that's that's the sort of pace I would have done it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were very atmospheric, actually. Yes. Oh, that's thank a good you. Word. That's what I was going for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say really... that now. That's what I was going <laughs> for. You were, you were definitely giving it um, sort of acting then. <laughs> I, I, I tend to go straight for things because... Of my news background. Yeah. I, I don't tend to put a lot of that kind of expression into it. But maybe I should. I should, you know, start to try and develop that a bit more. So I'd love to hear how you did it. In fact, this one, the, the day that I did it, I had a really bad cold. Oh, and no. So ah. my, my voice was a couple of octaves lower. So it gave it <laughs> even more of an eerie feel. Well, I haven't got time to send any woodbines over first, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> how about a bottle of scotch? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Nestled among the stunning Welsh landscape, the Skirid Inn has a history steeped in mystery and phantoms. Known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters and centuries-old secrets, this venue earned its reputation of one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. The exact age of the inn is unknown, but it was mentioned in documents from the year 1100. It has seen its fair share of turbulent times, serving as a hostel for weary travellers, a meeting place for rebels, and even where condemned prisoners were held en route to the gallows, as it also served as a courthouse. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's a much more newsy vibe to it. Yeah, yeah. much more matter-of-fact, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah. And it really works nicely, actually. I can see how th- that's exactly what they would want from that. Uh, yeah, yeah, except they slowed it down. <laughs> Your natural approach to it was to make it more newsy journalistic. Yeah. 
Yeah, my natural approach was almost the opposite of that. But yeah, it, it's it, interesting, isn't it, that we just bring, you know, what we bring to these things. I don't know why if either of you do write, but I mean, I used to report as well. So mm. you'd be out on the road thinking, oh, how am I going to structure this now, this yep. piece? How am I going to start it? Mm. Uh, what cue am I going to write for the, the presenter in the studio to read into this? Oh, that's really interesting because I write, but of course I'm usually writing to create a... A, a, a sense of story. Yeah, I'm yeah. writing to create. So that's a different kind of writing, actually. Absolutely, potentially. Yeah. Anyway, the stuff that I was involved in was was factual. Two and a half minutes, and and that's it. You've got to get as much as you possibly can in for that two and a half minutes. Play. How do you say that? And now, of course, here is the moment we love the wild mm, card bit. So yeah. we are going to approach these scripts in a completely different way. So, Mark. Yes. I would like you to be. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Are you going to be kind this week? Or not? I am. I am definitely going to be kind. <laughs> I think we should all be kind and all have the same script. Let's uh, <laughs> let's not uh, let's not worry about that. Do we not want to go anywhere near pulmonary arterial? Oh my god! Again? Nobody <laughs> wants to. Nobody wants to do that. Can you? I mean, I did that almost as a character anyway. Uh, that's but, true, actually, yeah. and beautifully you did it as well. So that's uh, that's maybe the way to go with it. But I would I would like you to be a career criminal. Oh, okay. So you're kind of like um, gangster, gangster. Uh, a script number two, please. A gangster with any particular motivation? Well, that's a good point, actually. A gangster planning a heist. Oh, okay, fair, fair. Okay, right. Mm, where am I going to go with this then? Okay. All right, you horrible people, listen up. Because nestled amongst the stunning Welsh landscapes, the skirried in right, that's the mark. It's got history steeped in mystery and phantoms. Known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters and centuries-old secrets, it's earned its reputation of one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. Do not be scared. <laughs> The exact age of the inn is unknown, but it was mentioned in documents from 1100. Now, it's seen its fair share of turbulent times, all right, so you know what you're going into. Serving as a hostel for weary travellers. It's always been a meeting place for rebels, and um, maybe I shouldn't tell you. Condemned prisoners were held en route there to the gallows because it served as a courthouse, but let's just make sure that we don't find ourselves in that position boys all right <laughs> very good <laughs> very nice <laughs> lovely geezer i like that i like the ad libs yeah definitely. <laughs> i think i probably had to <laughs> off the yeah. off the back yeah, of yeah. that so <laughs> what did you imagine you did you imagine yourself anywhere in particular i imagined myself with a lot of stubble in somewhere quite dark Ooh. looking at the skirred in so kind okay. of maybe in a van just oh, before right. we went into the Skirid Inn, something oh, like that. Right. Maybe. You were checking it out, were you? Yeah, yeah. Casing the joint, Casing as the they joint. say. Casing yes. the joint. <laughs> exactly, exactly. John, do you feel like you're up for you're up for a challenge? Well, it depends. It depends what you're going to ask me to do. Um, yes. I, I mean, you, I, I will say, go back to your actor roots, okay? Yes, so, okay. Uh, yeah. Once again, let's talk about Welsh landscapes. Yeah. But <laughs> let's, surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> let's be... A teacher, a Duke of Edinburgh Award teacher, uh, talking to a bunch of Duke of Edinburgh Award students. Okay, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. And they are going to have to camp around the Skirid Inn, something like that. Yes, okay, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I pay attention, please. Uh, nestled among the stunning Welsh landscape, the Skirid Inn has a history steeped in mystery and phantoms. Uh, Known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters, and centuries-old secrets. Pay attention. Stop that. This venue earned its reputation as one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. <laughs> the exact age of the inn is unknown, but it was mentioned in documents from the year uh, when? Sir, sir. Yes, that's right, okay. 1100. <laughs> it's uh, seen its fair share of turbulent times, uh, serving as a hostel for weary travellers, a meeting place for rebels, yes, rather like you, Henry. <laughs> and even where condemned prisoners were held en route for the gallows, it also served as a courthouse. Do you know what? I was given the vibe of, uh, who was that teacher in Grange Hill, the horrible one that everyone hated? Oh. Um, do you know the bald guy? Um, yeah. <laughs> I was really getting that kind of vibe. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely had teachers like that at school, for sure. Heavens above. 
<laughs> but you took us there directly. That was very good. That was nice characterization there, John. I love it. Thank Absolutely. You. So, John, you have one more task. And the task, of course, is to try and give a, a character to Sam for, for her to have a go at and maybe a motivation for Sam. Okay. Um, well, I was thinking of a, a supermarket checkout an announcer. Oh. But, 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 but. Mm. And then I thought, maybe an air stewardess. Huh? Okay. You, you know, the, the plane okay. is about to land in uh, Cardiff. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and so you're on the tannoy telling the okay. telling the passengers uh what the local attractions are. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Okay, yes. <clears throat> okay. Nestled among the stunning Welsh landscapes, the Skiridin just down there, you can see it, just to the left of the runway. It has a history steeped in mystery and Phantoms. Oh yes, it is known for its eerie legends, ghostly encounters and centuries-old secrets. Now this venue, yes, yes, the one you can see, sir, on the left, yes, <laughs> this venue earned its reputation as one of Wales' most enigmatic establishments. And yes, you can go straight there after we land. The exact age of the inn is unknown, but it's really jolly nice. That's it. Yeah. Bing, Thank bing. <laughs> yeah. Coming round with the drinks next. Cut and crew cross check. <laughs> and, of course, if you want to play along in the privacy of your own booths, we've put the scripts in the show notes so you can have a try yourselves. Yes, go on. Have a go at pulmonary arterial whatever oh, it is. Please do. <laughs> please do. If you really want, you can send it in as well if you like. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, oh, anyway. I, I love it. <laughs> our question this week... Because John is here, and John is a master of radio imaging with LBC. Uh, John, it's a really specific part of the industry, but unless you're in it, people think it's a little bit of a mystery. What are the kind of elements that you need to record? What do we need to know about radio imaging if we're going to do it properly? Um, Obviously, LBC, you know what the station is. You listen to it, you hear it, it's talk, it's news. The, the name of the station and the and the the output tells you really what the what the imaging should be um mm. with lbc when i when i took over as their station voice 10 years ago they just had a new package of music um made i think it was done something like hungry this fabulous you know full orchestra yeah. so all the music leading up to the the news on the hour it's got this minute long piece and it's all strings and and really moves wow. along. So having heard that, they played those to me um, before they even told me what they wanted me to do. And I just picked it up from that. Gosh. So you knew it was big by that point? Yeah, absolutely, yes. That, 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 was the, that was the word that I got in my head. Yeah. It's got to be big and bold. And, and going into the news, that, that particular one going into the news, it's on every hour, on the hour, mm. every hour. Yep. So it's got to have um, it's got to have a, a something that makes it stand out, obviously, because it's leading into the news. But mm. also, it's got to be done in in a way that isn't going to bore people. You know, yeah. it's, got, it's not going to sound too predictable. News jingles are weird, aren't they? Because they change every so often, depending on what the, the station actually wants to promote. Yeah, yeah, and. During during um, uh, oh, it was about three months before uh, the Queen passed away, um, I did a whole uh, another package for LBC with a much more somber tone. I bet, yeah, absolutely mm. interesting. Um, because they are quite the, the 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 general ones that they use every day are quite yeah. punchy. I was going to um, use the word punchy. That's exactly the right word. And do, yeah. do they come back with? direction like that or is it just that you've been doing it for so long that that they they know they trust they send you the script and you just do it generally speaking that's what happens but occasionally they will say this is for a a trail rather than um station ids or you know uh leading into a into the into a break um we're going into we're using these as lines within a trail um Mm. so i might just have to say things like tomorrow (laughs) just one word or yeah next week and so I will give them five or six versions of that, um, and then they will come back and say, can you do it quicker? Because with being in a 30-second trail, they don't want it spread out too much. It's got to be mm. really mm. tight so yeah. that if they're using clips of Nick Ferrari, who does The Breakfast Show, if they're going to mm. use a clip of him talking to a guest in between my bits, 
they they don't want me taking more time than than Nick is talk when he's talking. So yeah, yeah. Um, they have to be really th- those the lines will be really punchy. Um, other times they'll come and say, "Oh, just you're going to relax a little bit with that. Just you know, smooth it out a bit towards the end." But generally speaking, they send the script. I know exactly from the words what signed it, what kind of approach is required. I I do it and send it back to them, and the next thing is it's on air. You know. Wow. I've done station imaging for two different types of radio station. Uh, one was a hot hits Caribbean station, <laughs> and another was a very gentle classical music station. Not classical, but but kind of smooth, smooth yep. chill style music. Right. Mm. And those two imaging packages couldn't have been more different because one was yeah. hot hits, blah blah blah, and the other was really gentle and down. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you mean by it's just got to kind of go with whichever style yeah. channel the, it is. Yes. My, my, the stuff I do for LBC wouldn't be no use whatsoever on Classic FM. Mm. But funnily enough, they were, try, they were trying a thing where they were cross-promoting from Classic FM, saying mm. things like coming up at one o'clock on our sister station, LBC, right. Sheila Fogarty. Yeah. And so the, the, the producer I work with at LBC, who normally just sends the script, he sent a little note saying... This is on Classic FM, so please don't do it as punchy as you would normally do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you find ever that you've got a new presenter name and you have no idea how they actually pronounce their name? Yeah, that happens all the time. <laughs> it doesn't and surprise so me. If, if there's nobody I can actually phone and talk to, yeah, um, I will just have a stab at it doing it four, three or four different ways. Um, it, it happens when they get a, a, a politician at the last yeah. minute to, yeah. to go on Nick Ferrari's programme. Yeah. And if it's a politician that's not very well known, somebody from one of the back benches, you know, you you sometimes just have to have a stab at it and hope you're sure. right. I was often told at the BBC, oh, say, say it with confidence and say it quickly. Nobody will know apart from his mother. <laughs> John, that is amazing advice. And actually, I think is really good for people doing imaging. Thank you so much for coming on the show, John. A reminder that all of John Mundy's details can be found in the show notes. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've loved it. Thank you very much indeed for having me. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Thank you so much. And we'll also be putting today's scripts in the show notes so that you can have a read yourself. Indeed. So please do like and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode episode and feel free to give us a review if you fancy it yeah that's it for this week thanks again to john (laughs) monday and we'll be back next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest when we'll be asking how How do you say that that? how do you say that? that